Welcome in everyone to episode 109 of the Red Fast Review. I am Kilbride 10 and in this episode along with Moose we talk a little baseball, of course some golf, Ryder Cup playoffs, or, Ryder, or FedEx Cup playoffs along with the upcoming Ryder Cup, the Wyndham Championship and the results there. And I give you a little insight on the backyard game uh, called Quates where I will be playing in a tournament this weekend. Hope you enjoy. Welcome on everyone, Red Fast Review episode 109, Down Goes Anderson. Uh, we'll get into what that means in a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about the golf from this past weekend, the Wyndham Championship, Bryson DeChambeau uh, showing up at Live, uh, making a big statement and a push for the Ryder Cup team. Uh, so we'll touch base on that. A little baseball, maybe some video games, what we're up to lately. And, um, you know, we'll sprinkle it around as we always do, but mainly baseball and golf, I think, uh, uh, this week. Maybe a little fighting because that's, <clears throat> that seemed to be the, the, big, the big draw in baseball. But Moose, we'll kick it off with you first. What's going on in your neck of the woods? Anything new this past week? You got out golfing or something? Yeah, actually had a pretty action-packed weekend. Uh, worked Saturday morning, went to a concert Saturday night in Austin. Uh, it was Thomas Rhett in the openers were Cole Swindell and Nate Smith. Uh, so Seems if you like, like country music, show. Oh, it was, it was a hell of a concert in, uh, right in downtown Austin there at one of the, uh, where UT plays, uh, basketball at the Mooney center. It was so much fun. Got some, some good videos. He did a thing where I feel like it was like a little 10 minute segment of the show. Uh, he just played songs from different decades. Like he opened up with like the fifties was Elvis um eventually played like jesse's girl uh just some really good like decade hits uh which is really cool to see it. uh an artist like him who doesn't usually perform those kind of songs kind of put his own little spin on them so that was a lot of fun was that the pick and of then, you uh, were you in like a party bus going there or something what picture the picture there was like four of you and there was multiple white hats uh no no, no. oh so that was the, that was the night before um or like two nights before for my friend's birthday we just went out to some bars around here um but yeah pre-game the the concert a little bit did uh east east sixth street in austin um before the show and then west sixth street after dirty six it's like the sounds like the know, sixth it, street's it's the like place the, to be yeah it, it's like the main bar street in uh in downtown so it was my first time there which is a uh very interesting experience um i think How close one of my you, friends University fell of like five times uh probably like 30 35 minutes oh okay all right so it's, it's traffic, a little so ways pretty close yeah yeah a little ways I, being I there think back to like back downtown. nights I, I i was starting to think you were like five minutes away from campus or something oh gotcha gotcha no that'd be if that's the case i wish i would have moved down here when i was younger you start throwing the horn <laughs> the, the the long horn symbol up <laughs> Uh, I, I haven't done that yet, but, uh, definitely want to try to make it to a couple football games. Oh my maybe God. A couple, couple softball games and stuff. I had a couple sure. friends who I'll be down here for another year. They so. always wanted to go to a, uh, college football game. So they just said, screw it. And, you know, in the Northeast, obviously you're aware like college football is not yeah, existent. Like DC, but yeah, like I mean, and no one really cares really. that much really. Yeah. Um, unless you're like an Irish Catholic and you went to BC or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, they're like, yeah, let's, let's go do it up in the South somewhere, either SEC or, you know, uh, you know, one of the big schools. So, you know, they ended up choosing, mm -hmm. they didn't go SEC. They went, <clears throat> um, Texas and they went to Austin, they partied and they said it was like one of the best experiences. I mean, it was a, <laughs> It was a good game, but like not during Texas's glory days. Not that they've really okay. had any glory days recently. Mm -hmm. Although they've bounced well, they'll, back they'll a little have, bit. But... They'll have uh, Archie Manning pretty soon, right? Next yeah, year, Yeah, Arch Manning is going start, there. So yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Yeah, uh, definitely yeah, so make your was... way there. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure we will. So that was my Saturday, and then uh, Sunday at around 2 p.m. I think we got off around three. Yeah, I played golf with my cousin. Who uh, it was his birthday Friday, um, so I've now played. So the the course I work for, the ownership group has like three courses. I've played two of them, and the last one I've yet to play is the one I work at. So 
Uh, I get off around 1.30 tomorrow. If it's not too hot, maybe we get out there for 18 with a, a coworker if he wants to go um, and, and see what happens. But yeah, Sunday it was about 105, 108. Ooh. And uh, yeah, it's supposed it's to be 106 tomorrow. Really Good luck. Hot right now. Yeah, I can't wait. Doing, yeah. uh, um, 5 30 to 1 30. The mornings aren't bad. The mornings aren't bad. If you can get out before like 10, then I think you'll it'll start to get hot when you finish. But oh, yeah, it's God. it's like I I was hydrated. I ate before I go, which I almost never do. Um, and like I had a headache probably like before the the back nine. Like I must say, it. down there in uh, you know the the few times I've experienced is that heat hydration's the thing that kills me and i just don't, i don't mm -hmm. see it coming because i'm used to the and you are too like the crazy humidity like you we yeah, get it yeah, up yeah. here it's like 90 plus <laughs> and it's cr like near 100 percent humidity which is literally yeah, worse it disgusting. feels worse than you know the 105 down there but the the uh dehydration catches up to you real quick mm -hmm. so that's that's definitely so that's, no fun that's a nice thing is like back home like i I complained playing in like 90 degrees when it was humid. Like I, I would complain every other hole is like, it's too damn hot. Yeah. Because it, it just felt like it would get hotter as you go. The nice thing here is if it's like a hundred or like last week or like a week and a half ago, I probably played and it was 95 to a hundred, um, around the same time, about like three o'clock. Um, the nice thing is it doesn't feel like it's ever getting hotter. It's just constant. So yeah. like once you get used to it, it's not too bad, but yeah, it's still yeah because I mean ideal. Yeah, you start really sweating in the humidity up here, and then you yeah. get all sticky and like oh, it's just mm -hmm. disgusting. But I, I I was never able to take cold showers until I moved down here. There's been a couple days where like I'll come back from golf or laying out by the pool, and I'm just like sweating my ass off, and I'll take like not like I'll just take a cold shower. And I'm, I didn't do that for the first 24 years of my life. I, um, you know, I got caught up in listening to some podcasts and, you know, that's the big thing going around taking cold showers, right? Like yep. it kind of wakes yeah, you up. I must so say much it, better for you. it, you know, even just doing like 30 seconds to 60 seconds in the morning, you know, at mm -hmm. the end of your shower, that really yep. does help wake you up. I, like I, I was surprised when I do it and I still it, like I did it for like a month or two straight. And now I like reverted back. It's like, I really don't like that 30 <laughs> to 60 seconds. And, you know, I know I should do it like every day based on yeah. my past experiences even, but I still don't do it. But <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. Um, but but what, what what were you up to this last weekend? Um, Nothing too crazy. So I have my as we've talked about in the past, my annual Quake tournament coming up. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I want to. So, that looks like so much fun. Yeah. So I'll I'll bring up uh, a picture uh, or actually I can go to our YouTube page here while I'm talking about it. So anyways, last year I skipped because uh, my son uh, K11 was very young and we already had predetermined plans and it was kind of thrown together last minute real quick. So gotcha. um, it was the first year um, that I had to skip and uh let's play like this one uh yeah this is a good so this gives you a good depiction duo box
So like, do you own the Quate equipment? Oh, actually, you're pl- if we ever do that trip, you're probably flying, right? So that stuff wouldn't be. Just things off the top of my head. So weird. I don't know why it hides you sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'll show you the Quate factory. This is the place you buy them. It's literally only one place that makes them. Oh, damn. And it's in what's called the Slate Belt of the United States. It is in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. It's very close to New Jersey, but it's in like Amish country. And they're okay. these slate quake boards. Okay. And that's legit the cost of a, of a set $260. These Corn, things are. Um, I mean, they're probably heavy as hell. Exactly. That's uh, slate, it's two yeah. feet by two feet, and it's probably like an inch thick. But that thing is super sturdy, and like it's it'll last a lifetime. You can leave it outside. I mean, you you want to take it in the winter from snow, yeah. But like rain and everything, just leave it outside. The quakes you want to take in to take care of. These are yeah. same rubber as like a hockey puck, and okay. the inside of that is probably just smaller than a. Uh, the width of a hockey puck, so the actual full um, circumference of a um, quate is probably like the size of a Dunkin' Donuts donut, but okay. obviously much thinner. Um, yep. And you obviously throw it and you try to get it as close as possible to the um, to the pole right in the middle. Those lines help determine who's closest. So you, in this picture right here, you can see the one like kind of near my mouse. On the right mm-hmm. side is closer based on just those lines. Yeah. Person that's closest gets one point. If you happen to get the two closest, you get two points. If you get it on the ring, it's three points. Um, and it you know they'll cancel out a, too. Reminds me a kind of like a hybrid between washers and cornhole. Um. Yeah. It, it's it's or, a combination sorry, sorry. between Wa- washers horseshoes. and horseshoes. Yeah. Horseshoe, horseshoes and in cornhole is the way I think of it. So it's on okay. an inclined board, yeah. but it's slate instead of like a normal wooden cornhole board. And mm-hmm. there's a certain technique. Oh, actually, it looks like this. Uh, yeah, these are just some scrubs playing. So like this guy probably has a good technique because it's flying almost like a saucer, it's right? flat, yeah. Yeah, but you want to have the nose down so it actually lands and sticks. If you don't, okay. it'll like it will bounce right off. Um, okay. So like they don't necessarily stick all that well unless you throw it with the proper technique. Um, and then there's all sorts of strategy like there's certain types of throws that like oh I can get it real close to the hub almost every time. You know what I mean? Like you're just throwing it on to get a point. But then there's mm-hmm. also the, always the chance that someone gets it on the pin to. Uh, yeah get three points and your points are nullified only one team can score points at a time so it's whoever's yeah, closest or on the pin um but anyways we have this uh we created this web page and whatever and we've been keeping it going for i want to say i'll like, have like a stat sheet <laughs> um, i know it- the times you talked about it in the past is a really long time. Yeah, like we just go super in detail. One moment, I just want to hide my screen because I'm going to be typing in here. File crates. So this is. Like we keep games played, wins, losses, win percentage, the ringers battle quates we we created our own term like if someone's on the board and you actually hit their quate with your quate and move and change the point we call it a battle quate you're <laughs> battling it out of the way um we had this fun little term called open board find so each person you're you and your opponent are on the same side so me and you yep. if we're on the same team or uh just like cornhole if, um, yeah, yeah you each have two quates to throw so the last person to throw, if there's no quates, if the first three are all off the board, we mm-hmm. make we basically just make a public humiliation of the person who misses the open board. Like you just have to get it on the board and you get a point. So we <laughs> yeah. we, we say we're gonna find them. We never actually implemented a fine because you know yeah. it was mainly targeted towards the inferior players. Game winning quates. So whoever got the last point, your actual differential on your wins losses. So if you won like twenty one seventeen, you were a plus four. I love you know, that. ringers a game. So we did that since 2011. Uh, we had the COVID year, so this is 10 years worth of stats. This will be our 11th year, and we have uh, you know our all-time stats as well. So 
I have three championships. Uh, I have to update this. Uh, there's another. Uh, my buddy has four and his partner. And then uh, his parents actually have three each. So, um, so I'm I'm going for my fourth this year. I wasn't in go. 2020, um, 2022. Uh, so actually, this is will be the twelfth year because I don't even have the twenty two stats. Um, so it's it's when, been a little when bit. When does this usually take place? Uh, so it takes place. It, it's varied. It's usually been between June and August. Uh, we we've kind of moved it towards August because of the better weather consistently. And we've yep. also moved it from my buddy's backyard in Stoneham, which it was a nice backyard, to his lake house in um, Gilmanton, New Hampshire, which is kind of near okay. Winnipesaukee, but it's a much smaller lake. And it's just like this big compound, ton of people can fit in, and it's just perfect for, uh, yeah, I love that. you know, just getting completely reckless. So, um, yeah, that's going to dominate the day on uh, um, Saturday. Lovely. This is yeah, like that very, sounds like, like a lot of fun. I, I love like boards. yard games and stuff. So like, like I that. literally have like the you know the the teams we write them all out the stats we have it all like public hmm. and stuff. So sorry if my mic's cutting out. I'm sure it is, but um, uh, no, you're good. you know it's it's pretty cool to kind of get all the uh, super organized stuff in, and uh, you know we charge twenty five bucks a head and it covers all the overhead and you know. It works out pretty nice. We should have 14, 15 teams this year. The most I think we've had is 18. Um, but it's been a little hard because we're about an hour and a half away. So yeah, long story yeah. short, it's been a lot of planning for that. I am very excited. Um, fingers crossed that I uh, perform perform well. <laughs> I usually do. It's, you know, it's th there's like 15 teams. If I had to say there's really four to five teams that have a legit chance of winning. Um, okay. not to knock at the other teams, but, uh, it just seems that, uh, you know, as you could see in that, uh, career, uh, wins, mm -hmm. there weren't many people with a championship on next yeah, day. Yeah. So long story, uh, long story long, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But if you, if you want to know more and, uh, that, that's, uh, feel free to ask and feel free to check out that, uh, YouTube channel, but yeah um other than that you know been playing some games we we played a couple games of risk even got bear in there oh, yeah i don't know why yeah. but like it, my Bears, other friends yeah. like my high school buddies were into risk too mm -hmm. like j literally this past week so like the odds that that happened oh, no way were That's kind so of crazy funny. so now i'm like fully addicted and you know bear you know bear and i were what happened to watch the same person on youtube yeah um, but i i feel like i just have this itch for board games lately I don't know mm -hmm. like are you big into other board games and stuff you, you I, played settlers to too be, yeah i used to be really into board games as a kid like with my mom and stuff we'd always play like life or clue or just like some type of board game um so i haven't in a really long time but like if you get like the right group of people now like it can be a lot of fun but like people have to be into it i don't know i'm, I'm also just really competitive so like if one person isn't really into it then it kind of just like yeah throws it off for me a little bit but. I think you know what it is. Maybe it's just me being old and grumpy, and I'm like sick of not having a perfect swing plane in 2K. It's like I like <laughs> to be competitive, and in a board game, I know there's no way you can cheat or no way you can exploit <laughs> the system type of thing. I mean, yep. maybe like there's certain there's certain ways, but like yeah, there's there's a certain luck to it. You're not going to win every time, so you can get upset at the odds. But um, you know, I'd, I'd rather... I play on like Monopoly Plus like a week ago or something. Yeah, yeah, my butt in I haven't, that I haven't went nowhere. That in a while. <laughs> we played. Oh no, damn. We, we, yeah, and then that Risk game I told you about, we played for three hours. It, it was a complete stalemate. The the one on Xbox <laughs> is it takes way way too long. Okay. But um, um, anyway, well, I think it was because there wasn't a turn limit. But hmm. Uh, Anyways, um, so what you've you've been playing still some MLB and there's been uh, so I guess we'll touch base on MLB and then we'll get to um, we'll get mm -hmm. to uh, some golf from this past weekend because there was a good amount of golf. How far are you into this extreme program and tell us about the oh, extreme man. program. So it's probably it's your normal program structure wise. You have moments, missions, uh, collections. Um, there's a showdown, a conquest. I think it totals to like, let's just say it totals to a hundred points. The conquest is 30. How many baseball teams are there? 32, 30. It's just straight games. Like you've, you've played a conquest, you know, usually like the map is kind of spaced out. Like 
you'll have, you know, six teams with a bunch of, like, areas you can move to kind of gain reinforcements. This is just 30 or 32 games straight. It's like, you'll have to play on at least, you know, All-Star Hall of Fame through the whole thing. I didn't, I haven't attempted it yet, haven't started it. The showdown I've tried a couple times, uh, haven't gotten more than halfway in that. I probably have, like, three quarters of the moments done, but I haven't touched in about two weeks. So I have enough that enough program points that unlocked me. Uh, one of the mission cards you need. Um, haven't played it much since then, like I said, but it's supposed to be extremely hard and infuriating, and uh, definitely is. Definitely yeah. is. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I've taken a break from LLB from the uh, hair ripping out moments, and it just, it, there's... N- there's a never ending wealth of content and I just don't have the time yeah. to get to it. You know what I mean? It's like, I it's, want to, this is but the like... first year I've been like that too. Like, especially the way they, they changed how the content structure works with like set one, two and three, instead of just all cards are kind of the same thing and there's different categories. Yeah. Um, I had a, a lot of free time when it, it first came out cause I wasn't working a ton and it was the off season and stuff. Um, so it was, you know, it's kind of just what I was doing. And then uh, I took a break for like two months, maybe like a month ago, because it was just kind of repetitive. <laughs> and um, yeah, haven't haven't been too into it since. So like, I'm just way behind on everything. And it feels like, you know, with, with the rate everything comes out, there's no way for me to catch up and if I do, then they're like older, like, you know, they're not like the newer cards. Yeah. And it's it almost just, like you're so addicted and you want to do the uh, completion part of it, right? That you mm-hmm. never get to the part where you're, you want to play online or BR like that. That's yeah. kind of like the decompression. Okay. I have what I want. I have what I've been working towards. Now mm-hmm. I can sit back and play a few games with whatever my structure. T- it, it always seems like you're constantly trying to work and build for that team, and you never almost get there because there's always something new, which is good. Yeah. And, you know, I think, like, I, you know, for us, if you have more limited time, it, it makes it a little bit more challenging. But anyways, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so other stuff. This, let me pull up this video. Hold on. It's still Twitter.com. still works, by the way. <laughs> so in MLB, just because that, that's, that's obviously the... the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that one a couple times. Um, the current sport that's going on other than golf. Um, we have Giancarlo Stanton. Let's take a look here. Let's, let's keep it on mute so we don't have to worry about DMCA issues. Have you ever seen? Like, he doesn't even make an attempt to get to the plate. He just kind of he's like, ah, oh, he got me. I'm done. Like, now, no if... slide. I mean, not that you can slide going at that speed. Oh, this is a good angle. I haven't seen this angle. Yeah. Immediate trot. <laughs> even the third base coach isn't eager to like wave him. Third like, base he's coach not... was moving faster than him towards the freaking home yeah. plate. <laughs> Like, the, the way he's waving him in, it's not like, hurry up, it's going to be close. It's more like, all right, go ahead. You yeah. Know. That was just pathetic. And, you know, the Yankees being in last place, too, that's just a <laughs> microcosm of how their whole season is. The uh, fact that... that this is, like, the third or fourth time where a similar video with either Stanton or when they had Gary Sanchez, his surfaced of guys just not hustling during plays is just so comical to me i I, one it doesn't get old too it doesn't get old it'd be one thing if you're you're in first place or it's like an eight one game and like maybe you just have a lapse of judgment like clearly there was a lapse of judgment there but you get it's a one one game you're fighting for a playoff spot like i know you're technically in last place but they're still well within playoff right um yeah i I mean there's a chance a at least it's an absolute oh they're ahead they're bag. ahead of the red sox right now what's oh, the uh great. wild card we have a wild card uh well, i guess i can just look at it uh they're well the twins are in so the astros mariners blue jays rays uh so they are fifth place and they would be behind the astros who have 64 wins they're six games back i mean they're not out of it 
yeah. um, or five and a half or something like that. Um, just like inexcusable. Four and six in the last yeah. ten. I mean, the Red Sox have not been better, but um, <laughs> they were off to a great July, but just kind of yeah. I I think the Red Sox would be close to 500 this year so yeah I, yeah huge Easy. win with uh the way they've been playing that yeah supposedly have a really good farm system too so hopefully they're mm -hmm. bringing it up one of the weird things is their low payroll like 2023 mlb payrolls like have do you ever recall in your lifetime where the red sox have been considered low spenders i know they 13th. don't like to pay guys oh my goodness that's like nuts. what? It's, it's, a hundred and three million. Team. That's it. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, hundred and eighty. Okay, hundred and three on the twenty six man. I guess they have some tied up and retained and and whatever injured reserve. Who's on the injured reserve? Fifty six million. Um, I think Sale still is maybe. Sale still on there. Yeah, sale. Trevor, Trevor Story. Story, twenty million on the IR. Uh, didn't know Kluber was Kluber. on the IR. Oh, what an awful contract! <laughs> yeah, I mean these three and <laughs> one million dollar guys, whatever. Yeah. But like, oof, thirty million <laughs> three between three of your Trevor. biggest contracts. <laughs> yeah, my God. But I mean, the, the rest of their con, they haven't been spending. It's very obscure. Yeah. They definitely don't like to pay people. That's why Mookie left. It's maybe not the only reason why Mookie left, but he's still gone. Like JD yeah. Xander, lucky to get Devers back because they had to pay somebody. But look at the number one payroll in <laughs> baseball: the New York Mets, three hundred and forty-four, with a one hundred and fifty-six million dollars in retained salary. Can it, this is the most comical thing I think I have yeah. ever seen? Where's their retained? Max Scherzer, they're paying $43 million to not play for them. Justin Verlander, $43 million to not play, pay for them. Robinson Cano. Robinson Cano. Oh, my. I, I don't even know if he plays yeah. anymore. Apparently, he's on the Braves. Uh, free agent. Oh, uh, maybe not. That was just his headshot. Robinson Cano. When was the last time he played an MLB game? Uh, baseball reference. Last play total, I guess 2022, he played some games. Huh. Huh. He was suspended the entire 2021 20, season. So there you go. That's that's a nice 20 million well spent. James McCann, not even sure who that is. My goodness. And I mean, Mark of course, Canada, you got, just traded. Where's Bobby Bonilla? Don't we have him? <laughs> he should be on there. Oh, there we go. Deferred salaries. <laughs> there he is. Can't go <laughs> without million. him. Brett Saberhagen. Don't forget million. about his quarter mil. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just what a pathetic, pathetic team dishing out. I, I Like, you you thought they were going to try with signing uh, Verlander and Scherzer, and then they just, like, give yeah, up. Yeah, things, things were looking up, and then just... Not great decisions, and they're not very lucky in the past when it's come to the injury bug and stuff. And the Mets fans can't catch a break. It's yeah, so funny. Oh man. Um, but there was one real highlight that we all saw, or most of us. Moose said, um, I, I did see this one. Okay, I thought you didn't see the full thing. Oh, no, no. I, I didn't see the full uh boxing right. match. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it at all, so I don't even... We can skip okay. over that. Yeah, I guess th there was a fight. We'll start there. Um, Jake Paul and um, Nate, Diaz. Nate Diaz. Yeah, who mm -hmm. won? I don't even know who won. Uh, Jake Paul won by a unanimous decision. Wow, okay. All yeah. Right. But the bigger and more, um, you know, more entertaining fight... Well, I, I can't say uh, more entertaining if I didn't watch the other one, but... The Jose Ramirez and Tim Anderson fight. Take a quick peek here. Yeah, this is something. <laughs> and good night. And Bob. Oh. At first when I saw it, it didn't look like he caught him clean. It looks like maybe he got like a knuckle or two on his jaw, but watching some of the replays, apparently oh, yeah. it's enough to, to daze him there for a couple 
second. Yeah, that man is out. Do they have the... I want to see the alternate angle. I think this might be the angle. No. Oh, this was funny. Did you see this? The uh, uh, yeah, there's the little view. AI thing that they've been doing. Yeah, I didn't even know this thing existed, and I thought this was like kind of a joke. Yeah, no, I only saw it like, a couple weeks ago. It's <laughs> 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 so cool. <laughs> oh, they have the. Oh, this might be it. Jeez, it just turns into a montage. Wish they had the other angle. Different <laughs> angle. Oh, what do we got here? World. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. Okay. Um. Oh, that's a nasty elbow. Alternate. Jose Ramirez fight. But anyways, uh, we'll try to look for it. This is just like, I don't understand why they were so mad. It's got, it got to be something that obviously was said. Like, I don't know what was wrong with the, the sliding so stuff there, unless... He, he went right here to, to like reach for a hand up, and then I guess because Anderson shug, shrugged it off, and then yeah, maybe. Ramirez got in his fight, his face, and then I find this part comical. Like Anderson Just goes to square up, square up, yeah, yeah, like, like he like he looks ready. But like, who does that? Like, yeah, and out in public, you like square up with your <laughs> your fist like this, like. You just go after the guy immediately, I would imagine. Like, I mean, I'm not one to get in a street fight or anything, but, like, <laughs> I figured you, you just, like, go in. Like, you know, he, he, I guess he's giving him the courtesy to uh, get yeah, ready. He, he, I was going to, he wanted to wait for his backup from the bullpen and the, the dugout there. Maybe he knew it wasn't going to go well. Oh, and then he just gets smoked, too. Anderson. Ooh. Wobbles. Like he can't even, yeah. <laughs> he can't even stand up straight. Like getting, like uh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that thing. I was like, dugout. damn. Like he actually got him. Oh god. So Jose Ramirez comes out looking like a badass from this, but um, mm -hmm. oh, you don't see a good fight, you know, in a while. This. This no. reminds me of back in one of my favorite plays, Mr. Joe Kelly, when uh, I forget who oh, charged the mound. Yeah. Joe Kelly uh, always shoot. got me fired up. Who was it? I love Joe Kelly. He's so Joe Kelly fight. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's a nice little slow mo. Oh, was it? Yeah, that, that was the that was yeah. the angle. Like, clearly gets him good, too, as he's being held back, too. Yep. Gotta give it a Ramirez. I mean, the White Sox were all there defending Anderson. <laughs> I know, like, it's like a four-on-one. Like, he just hits him clean. Yeah, like, the Joe Kelly mockery stuff, that just gets me fired. And this yeah, is what I, I, what I, the, what the I love about right baseball. Below right here with Joe Kelly. Yep. <laughs> Starts pounding on the guy with his. Huh? Be careful on Twitter. You never know. <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, let's get to Sue Sue uh, Lilla to some golf, shall we? Um, uh, did you oh, catch re real quick? Yeah, real quick ahead. before the golf. Have you seen any of the messy in Inter uh, Miami stuff? 
I, I see him lighting it up and scoring a goal every day, but yeah, at the same time, absolutely. I'm saying he's, to myself... He has six goals in four games. It's at been the same time, it's like... So much fun to watch those highlights. If Tiger went over the Japan oh, no, it, and played, it's like, <laughs> exactly. of course he's going to freaking win the exactly. tournament, you know? It's he's like, in a, a totally different tier than everyone else, but it's, just, it's fun watching people... Like, watching him, like, go off like that and just acting like it. Like, he doesn't act like he's so much yeah. better than everyone else. I know. Messi does have a great persona about him, and, like, you know, he's very humble very very humble mm -hmm. and I, I, he is a very fun person to root for unfortunately for me like i just it doesn't i i'd like to get into soccer um it just doesn't doesn't move no, the I'm, needle I'm the for same, me yet i don't know why I'm the like same boat as you did you watch like, any did, of the the women's world cup at all it's still ongoing i'm pretty sure right no i i didn't get to i've seen the the highlight a couple of the highlights but that's about it yeah i think i, I, I think that was over the weekend when i was out I think I like I think I enjoyed most of the World Cup when it was happening and like there was more pressure, more implications on the games. Um, I don't know, but no, knowing that it's not the top people in the world, like. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what I it is that like I can't. Watch MLS or maybe it's just like it's not as uh, talked about, you know what I mean? Like NFL just completely dominates all of the coverage over here as far as like global uh or national sports media like you'll get a taste of baseball you'll get a taste of basketball barely mm -hmm. any hockey and then like mm -hmm. just for the majors on golf you know what i mean um watch the yes i saw the the rapino one that that yeah that's, uh, I'm, i assume that's what he's talking about that's what i saw yeah the rapino one yeah i've seen a lot of gifts of that uh rapino pk Oh, not Rapino. Oh, I I think who'd we place? Yeah, Sweden. Try just look up like Sweden. Sweden penalty. PK. Look here. Oh. Whoa! No. VAR. I mean, there must be an overhead at Gamma, right? That we're not even going to see an angle. <laughs> you know what? Actually. To me, it looked like. She, that, did she not just wave that, that off? No goal? I, that, that's what that hand motion looks like to me. Can one of the... Oh, maybe maybe that's the game over. Like, the first point oh, is a goal, yeah. and then maybe she was translating. Yeah, because, I mean, they had to be in sudden death right now. Obviously, we didn't score ours, so if they scored both, they won. It went in by a millimeter. Oh, it can't save it twice. So a goalie oh. only... So, so a goalie only gets one touch, just like a shooter does in, in PKs? That's I know, weird. Because, like, you'll see the hockey shootout saves all the time of, like, the puck is, like, you know, squeaks through the goalie's pads, dribbling towards the goal line, and they sweep it off the line or something. But, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. See, like, the national stuff I, I do know. get into, and, like, um, maybe it's just because th this is, I would probably get much more into it um, if it was on, you know, at a normal time. Like, aren't these on at, like, four in the morning or something right, like that right now? Um, uh, yeah, I think that's what Rob said. He's like, I can't believe I just woke up at yeah, you know, there's 4 a.m. or something to watch it lose. Some ungodly hour. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I'd like to... Maybe Messi, Messi is what it needs, and maybe Messi uh, will bring more, more televised um, attention towards, um, you know, the MLS. Obviously, the MLS in Miami was inter Miami has, has their yeah. fans, their ticket sales, everything has gone through the roof. But it's like, OK, I, I Messi think... is at the end of his career, like Beckham did the same thing. And then like they just retire, like obviously Messi is still one of the best in the world. Like it's not not mm -hmm. a knock against Messi, but like if he's there for three, four more years, great. We need more people to come over, like get Mbappe over or something like that. And then now yeah, you're really talking. but. 
he's gonna go you know would you see his uh, his offer basically a billion dollars to go to uh yeah, the live not the live but insane. like the live equivalent in saudi arabia yeah unbelievable Nuts. i i think i saw like after Messi signed inter uh i almost say inter milan every time inter miami's uh season ticket sales went up like two million dollars mm. or something ridiculous yeah so hopefully it draws more attention like if it's on tv more and like i have an idea of what's going on like the revolution were nasty apparently like 10 years yeah, ago a, a, a couple of years ago i think they had a couple deep runs they, well i think they went to the finals like five straight years and lost or something it was like the buffalo bills Damn. of the uh mls <laughs> something crazy um yeah. they played gillette right i think uh, yeah, they where, do. They play at Gillette. They? But that was the thing. So here's my experience, and this is what turns me off about the MLS. I went to one MLS game. My buddy begged me because he's a big... He didn't really beg me, but he was like, let's go. Let's do it. I'm like, all right, I'm in college. It's far, it's far away. That's the big, big deterrent for me to go to yeah. MLS and even the Patriots. I love the Patriots, and I would want to go. But it's a pain in the ass to get Gillette. I've, to I've Gillette. only been to Foxborough once. And it's yeah, a, it wasn't it's like, over an hour for me. So it, it just because I, I was driving through a... Yeah. Anyways, it's over an hour for me and MLS playoffs happens to be in like November time frame where it's it's cold weather. I, I don't it could have been January for all I know. It was cold weather. So of course it's thirty degrees. It's a night game. They're playing the Chicago Fire. Um it's a first game of a home and home. They do two game series. Mm -hmm. I didn't know all this before going in. I just hey, it's a MLS playoff game. Let's go. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm sitting there and freezing my tits off. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And I'm sitting on, sipping on a hot chocolate, you know, got a little something extra in there. But yeah. that's besides the point to keep, keep you a little warm. And it ends 0-0, zero, zero, a playoff <laughs> game. And like, Yikes. I go to my buddy Miles, I'm like, uh, what are we doing here? He's like, well, it's best of two when it's a net goal differential. I'm like, yeah. fuck this. This is the most stupid ass. I went to a playoff game and I'm not seeing a single goal. <laughs> like, I, and I'm sitting here freezing. Like, I get the defensive aspect. I think it just, uh, you know, and on top of it, it's inferior talent too. Like, maybe if it's like a lot of close calls, like there was, I think the Rev Revs had one shot on net. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm sitting there for two two hours and I'm freezing and I'm like just waiting, waiting, yeah. waiting. And on top of that, you know, hour and a half drive each way. Um, but not to, not to dwell on, uh, my distaste for the MLS, mm. but, uh, yeah, you know, like if I was more invested, had, had fandom in a, in a premier league team, I love the relegation system. I think that's a really yeah. cool thing. Um, you know, constantly seeing teams go up and down, like, Imagine if like the, you know, there was triple A teams or like, you know, the NFL, for example, like Alabama football made it to the NFL and they just <laughs> yeah. relegated the Browns or something, you know, That'd be fucking awesome. yeah. soon to be relegated the Patriots because they, they, <laughs> they stink. But anyways, um, but um, yeah, so that was that was my experience. And I've watched a couple and just every single time it's an MLS game, it just it turns out. Oh. And the other big thing, so Gillette holds like 75,000 people. The mm -hmm. lower bowl was where I was. It was like yeah. a $20 ticket. I'm like, fantastic. Playoff game, 20 bucks. Can't beat it. It yep. was half full. Like the other half, uh, they didn't even open for sales. The, the, the top seats, they didn't open for sales. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Like the, it, the, the crowd wasn't into it as well. So anyways, um, mentioned Live briefly. If you had a chance, did you see what happened in Live this past weekend? Oh my goodness. I I saw like a few clips on it. I didn't really watch any of it, but yeah, Bryson just so on fire. Bryson the Shambo went out and shot a final round uh fifty-eight to win the individual um part I saw of his the nine Liv. iron, like two twenty. Yeah, that was the other thing. Bryson <laughs> Nine iron. This was just because it says yeah. right there, two hundred and sixteen yard. I hate how that. I gotta figure just out why a, that does that. Just a nice easy nine iron. It's gotta be because there's not that many people on the call. No, 
it did it last time too. And he just literally sticks it like a like a normal nine iron shot, but that's two hundred yards away. I mean, I'm sure it's <laughs> downhill a little bit, or maybe downwind. Although it doesn't really look that windy from the trees. Um, but he's just a just nuts. insane person. He's changed his physique a little bit. He looked like super mega Bryson for like a couple of years there. And like, I feel mm -hmm. like ever since he went over to live, he's leaned down a little bit. It lo looks a little bit, um, <clears throat> yeah, like a seven iron flight. I'm sure he's got a different angle on his nine iron too, right? It probably plays as like an eight iron or something. Um, and he's just a big unit of a human being. Um, final putt. One thing, I don't know how... Oh, is it? it? Yeah, it was raining on the final hole, too. That's very impressive. Damn, I didn't see that. Yeah, I haven't seen this angle. Vito Pereira with a nice second. Oh. And can't get a win, although this isn't a major. Uh, well, I guess he didn't finish second in, uh, <laughs> in <laughs> Tulsa either, but... I just remember Mito from the from his epic collapse, getting the double bogey on uh, eighteen at uh, the U.S. Open. It or was it oh, players uh, the PGA Championship? Yeah, PGA Championship, the one that Justin Thomas won, twenty twenty one. That was that was unfortunate. He just hit smoked it. Oh, here's the angle. Yeah, Bryson on eighteen, big long uphill putt, oh, wow. breaking a little left to right. Um, you know, I didn't watch the whole round. One thing I thought was interesting, um, Rick. yeah, this guy, Rick run good, the guy. Oh. And I, this is not a knock. There have been 21 rounds better than Bryson DeChambeau's 58 in professional oh. golf this year. I thought this was kind of nice. interesting. And it wasn't statistically based off of the 58. It was more of the strokes gain stat where he was 8.74 strokes gained in this particular round. Um, it was a par 70 course. Yeah, with a driver shaft. He probably has all like composite yeah. shafts on his irons. Um, eh. You know, a 58 is a 58. Like, any way you draw it up, I mean, it's 12 under par. I, it, It's t it's tough to really uh, put into perspective, but I, I do think, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to knock it, but at the same time, like, shoot, shooting sub-60 when you know it's a par 72 just, like, is such a cool thing. Um, but, I mean, he did two strokes better, and he dominated the field, so kudos to him. I wonder if... The next question it begs is, do they take him to the Ryder Cup? Um, yeah, and right. I don't know how far in distance he is from the um, PGA Tour guys, because it's all PGA Tour uh, projected, projected Ryder Cup team. Uh, yeah, here we go. Scotty, Wyndham Clark, Brian Harmon, Brooks. Oh, Brooks. Brooks will be there, so uh, I lied. So there'll be one live guy, and where is Bryson? He just doesn't have any points, or doesn't get he doesn't get points for the Ryder Cup for his live win. So he's on the outside looking in. I don't know who you drop off because there's six guys that auto make it, and it'll be ba be based off of points. I would imagine those standings hold. Maybe Holma sneaks in there, knocks out Cantlay if Cantlay doesn't do well at St. Jude. Um, so that would kind of be the only shakeup. I would imagine those top seven auto make it. Cam Young's been playing solid speed. Bradley Morikawa Fowler. Um, oh, wow. I didn't realize Burns was right there behind Fowler. So um, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see who the Ryder Cup, Cup picks are. I personally, I said this a couple weeks ago, I think it goes chalk one through 12. Uh, Sam Burns has been kind of off and on. And Justin Thomas also on the outside looking in. He has not been playing well lately, although he did make a nice run. And did you see him? His uh, Justin Thomas. He oh, is. So one of the things they keep track of um, on all these events, like leading up to the FedEx Cup playoffs, is exactly where you are in the standings. It's like, okay, you're 75th, only top 70 advance. You know, like, okay, you made a birdie, now you're 72nd. He needed a birdie on 18. Um, let me go to Twitter. 
to make the FedEx Cup playoff. Thomas. I did. Oh, I did see this. Yeah. Can I spell? <laughs> Just do Justin Thomas. Oh, okay, here we go. So he needed this chip in to make it inside the projected top 70, which he did end up, I think, 71st. And he mm. hit the flag stick. This is just after he had an absolute hack out of the trees. Um, uh, Oh, the the swing where he like almost he like fell literally over. just a massive hook shot. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw that earlier today. Um, which was just incredible. But anyways, uh, sad to see him outside looking in, not being being a part of it. But quite frankly, he didn't deserve it the way he played this year. He he. Well, I think he kind of got a little screwed at the Masters. He, he he was an unfortunate victim of bad weather, and he's just been playing bad on top of it. So um, I love Justin Thomas, love rooting for him. And uh, speaking of him, that, 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 that was who ended up winning that tournament versus Mito Pereira. Um, although I think it was a Zally playoff. Um, doesn't matter who he played, Europe wins. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Um, Scotty Scheffler, you know, maybe Scotty in, in alt shots going to be deadly. He's just going to tuck one three feet and then he's not going to have to worry about putting it. So um, <laughs> just watch out. He's, he's going to win that every time. They just need to figure out the right pairings. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the Ryder Cup and uh, FedEx Cup playoffs. So that's coming up this week. Uh, St. Jude. Um, oh, and so Wy Wyndham. Um, let's see. Lucas Glover wins it. Final putt. This was uh, nope. Are they are they just not going to show the one that I want? Yeah, this is the one. This is really cool. Watching him and his watch his family like he's just so excited. He he's been like so overdue, and then seeing his family and his kids. Yeah, he just loved to see this stuff. God, the tan line from the hat is brutal. I, think he's a, I feel like, did he win at Beth Page Black? Did he win? He's a major champion, if I remember correctly. Lucas Lover. Uh, 2009, nailed it. 2009, Beth Page. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tiger was right there. Uh oh oh first round Lucas yeah I was probably pissed because I had money on Tiger or I was rooting <laughs> for Tiger I, I I remember Tiger's losses better than half of his wins um <laughs> especially when a rando <laughs> yeah that was an yeah, ugly putter that's an too interesting he does. interesting putter um but. I don't know. I'm excited for uh, golf playoffs. Did you watch any of this or see anything else from Liv or anything this past weekend? I know golf is kind of in the in a weird spot. A lot of people fixate and focus on the majors, so I wouldn't be surprised yeah, if you kind of everything I see is from Twitter. So. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of the good clips and stuff are from Twitter. I, so I've been posting. If you want to follow along, yeah, Y E Yang Masters. I'll never forget it. Oh mm. God, that one. That one leaves a taste in your mouth. I mean, and still, like, what was it? Uh, the chip in, right, versus DeMarco. Like, he bogeys 18 and tries to give DeMarco the win and ends up winning that in the playoff. That that one that one gave me nightmares for a little while, but then still was glad. Um, Discord? Do I have a Discord? No, oh, it would be helpful if I spelled it right. D-I-S-C-O-R-D. Why y oh. Yangs was PGA? <clears throat> I e Yang. Did you, who am I thinking of in the masses? Was there another um, mass? 
Masters. Hmm. Oh, the other guy in the Carl Schwartzel. No, maybe you're right. I don't know why I was thinking that was the Masters. Anyways, um, I've been putting out picks for uh, mm -hmm. occasionally on t tournaments. I'm going to try to do it for each tournament. Um, what is it? Socials? There it is. On my link tree, if you want to join the Discord, I'm sure everyone in here is in my Discord. I put out pre-tournament picks. Um, I had 21 units on the line, and I had two guys, um, or well, four. it was spread between four guys, and I had Adam Scott, uh, Wyndham Championship results. And I had um, Brendan Todd, both to finish top five or better. Where do they finish? Mm. Both mm. one shot back T7. Um, so just missed on a nice little payday. I cashed in some tickets with them, both hitting top 20s. And I put a nice big ticket on Adam Scott to make the cut. Um, so those were those were nice hits. Um, lost some money on Bo Hosser, who played terribly, and then um, had another couple tickets on Denny McCarthy, who just missed the cut by one shot. So unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to uh, play on the weekend. But uh, looking forward to it. Uh, it'll be a much bigger field this weekend. St. Jude, I believe, right? Yeah, TPC Southwind. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, August 10th. Yep, yeah, starts on Thursday. So looking forward to it. Nice big fat purse. We'll wait till the tea times are out. I'll be posting my picks in the Discord if you want to follow along. Um, yeah, every once in a while I do Uber and I keep track of the units and everything and what I'm doing. So, I mean, I, my unit... I, I do a bunch of bets, so I, I, I bet usually bet small units and whatever, but I was this close to, you know, like if both of both Adam Scott and Brandon Todd hit top five, then, you know, I'm up 15 units on the week as opposed to loss of negative one, which a negative one loss on a, on a 21 unit week isn't all that bad by any means. But, um, you know, that's golf. The, 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 the structure is a little tough to uh, break through, but um, yeah, I'll be posting that. Um, what else you got? You got anything uh, else you got going on this week, Moose? Uh, this week? Yeah, a little later in the week. Uh, go ahead. What are you going to say? I was going to say, I have one more golf clip. So we haven't done any clips in a little while. Um, oh, yeah. Or not to mention podcasts in a little while, really. Um, but there is one clip I thought that was noteworthy. I don't know if you saw it. Probably, sure. you know. I'm sure everyone's seen it by now. The uh, Eddie Emo one. Have you seen this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was just a fantastic views. shot. Uh, looks like Pebble 16 and intentionally playing the cart path. He's playing with Jimmy online, but this was uh, this was actually really cool. Yeah, I think 2K liked it or retweeted it. One of the two. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The perfect roll through the right through the bunker and then doink doink. Hits the pin. I don't know if Jimmy made the putt. That's the yeah. We'll the, never that's know. that's the real ticker. The kicker here, right? Did did he make the putt? Um, but just perfectly played. Some some of these uh, you know clips definitely get stale after a little while. But you know a unique one like this doesn't happen all too too often. So uh, big shout out to Eddie for uh, that fantastic shot. So feel free to. Um, um, send any in. Uh, what's Uber saying? Me and Al like a good cross tour double with the Euro. I think that was back with the the Ryder Cup talk. Right. I'm not sure what a cross tour double with the Euro. Oh, oh, oh! Like you're betting the European tour as well. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that on EA. Yeah, but it went. Yeah, EA was uh, this EA. I, I don't know. Like, I just have no interest. The, the graphics are fantastic. I just don't like the gameplay. 
Did you even get the game news? It. it was yeah, it was gifted to me. Um oh. played it for a couple hours. Must be nice. Um uh yeah, I haven't played a golf game, I think, since like March. Yeah, I, I played TGC last week and it just you know, I shot twenty under par, I think, or nineteen under par through my two two rounds in Elite and missed the cut by like a handful of strokes and I just get so frustrated because I can't get a good swing plane anymore. So I'm just constantly <laughs> offline and it's just like the amount of time and dedication I'm sitting there trying to fiddle, uh, getting a good swing plane. It's just like, uh, it drives me nuts. Like I love, love golf. It just, uh, you know, there's, there's the fine line of my patience and the amount of time I'm putting into it. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I keep playing on and off and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll stream some sometime soon, but it just hasn't scratched that ditch, you know, when I you're playing. So. But anyways, what were you saying uh, you were up to this week? Um, Friday, I'm working until Thursday. Friday, I'm off. And then Saturday morning, I'm flying to uh, Newport, Rhode Island for a wedding. So I'll be back home on the East Coast until the 17th, seeing uh, a lot of family that I haven't seen in a while. So it'll be uh, very fun. Looking forward to it. And Newport is, can't remember the last time I was in Newport, but it's, it's, a gorgeous destination so very nice yeah i mean i've heard great things about newport and um you know so that that sounds like a fantastic time oh yeah i will be uh i will be occupied with this equate tournament um uh, maybe i'll stream uh you know again on wednesday maybe we'll play some some games together uh do some risks some board games or something like that yeah, yeah i've been yeah. i've been itching for for some games with the boys and you know always have a good time doing that um Madden's around the corner. I'm going to be doing um, posting those on YouTube. I intend intend on making a little hype video. I started drafting up a script. Um lost a little bit of the itch for MLB. I was drafting up a video, just couldn't quite get it together for MLB. Um so no dice there. But uh you know, it is what it is. Can all can always get get a bunch of winners. So uh yeah, that's all I uh all I got at the moment. Um, so with that being said, thank you anyone that has tuned in tonight. Oops, Dino, uh, Lex, uh, who else was in there? Crown, Brown. uh, Maddie from Canada. Uh, yeah, always, Trump. always no, love Matt. Maddie does a great job. I must say on setting up elite. If he's still setting up elite, Maddie, you're doing a great job. It is definitely a me thing. It just, I get so frustrated when I have a slightly offline swing plane and I'm 15 yards to the left and like I go into crap. And it's just like, ah, I, it, the swing plane seems so penalizing. And it just, uh, I, I feel like there's an input issue on my controller or just me being, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't really feel like figuring out an input issue type thing. But anyways, uh, let's adjourn for the evening. We will be back next week, hopefully uh, stronger with a little bit more of us. We'll talk a, a handful of different things. And uh, but for now, let's go raid. Let's see if the raid feature works on this channel. Uh, I think he's playing. Yeah, he's playing some uh, kinetic rounds. Yeet Troy Jenkins. Let's go say hello to Mr. Yeet Troy um, as he's playing his TGC rounds. And it looks like he struggles with the swing plane too. So maybe he's in the same boat. But And I'll say it for Bear. Suck it, Moose.